All right, N5BSB here. Today I wanted to do somewhat of a demonstration video on the uh, Zygu X6100 with the newest R1 CPU uh, firmware 26.1 and specifically the operation of the FT8 app. And... I don't know if there's a manual and I don't know everything about it. So if I make mistakes or somebody can feel free to correct me. So I've got the X6100 turned on and I'm going to click on the app button. Maybe. Oh yeah. I just passed it up. I have to cycle through it. All right. And I do have the Wi-Fi connected, so it, it will automatically time sync. Uh, this little icon up here shows that it's synced to the time server. So click on FT8. And it says FT8 20 meters. It takes a minute, uh, you know, a few seconds for it to populate. Uh, you can also can change your frequency here. Um, I'm not hundred percent sure how, um, it doesn't tell you what frequency you're on, but you can try to find a, a clear spot here in this spectrum. Uh, so right now we're getting some signals. All right. So what do these buttons down here mean? Uh, right now I have it set to show CQ only this station here. I worked already. It's got a line drawn through it. Um, so we're in the FT8 mode right here. If I press that again, it'll go to FT4. Uh, this is your, your TXCQ and also your CQ, your calling CQ button. I like to never figure this one out, but if you press and hold this button, maybe, maybe not. Oh, there it goes. TXCQ enabled, disabled. It should change to, and it's going to make a liar out of me. Maybe I have to enable it and then press and hold. There it goes. Now it's uh, oh, TXCQ. It's calling CQ right now. Um, if you, I'll show you in a minute, but if you rotate and click on somebody's call sign from somebody else that's calling CQ, uh, this will change. And I like to never figure out how to get it back to where I could call CQ, but you got to press and hold it. Uh, this auto enable over here is, um, I think it's to enable to cycle automatically through the uh, different message exchanges. I think uh, the CQ modifier. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think that's like if you want to do CQ POTA, you would click in here and you would go in and put P O T A. I have not tried that yet. Um, the other thing, when you go into this screen, if you don't do anything, there's no way to get out of it. So that might be a bug. Um, so I actually had to completely get out and go back and go back into FT8 through the app button. Um, once I got in there, I could not get out. So there is a check mark in there. If you put, put an entry in there, you can click on the check mark and you know, that may take you out. But if you just go in there and don't do anything, it wouldn't let you out. Now, one other thing while we're in here, and like I said, it's calling CQ. Um, if you don't have your multifunction knob turned all the way down to the bottom. So let's say you, you have it up here somewhere. The screen will not automatically update. Uh, you won't be able to see the exchanges coming back from you. So you have to have that turned all the way to the bottom. Like right now, see, you, you, you didn't see the incoming messages. So if you turn it down here, you'll see more messages here. So that's important when you're trying to communicate with somebody that you keep that turned all the way down so you see the messages scrolling. 
So if you wanted to stop right now, you press this button and it says TXCQ disable. So now it's going to stop calling CQ. So now if I wanted to go and let's say this guy KJ5 EJV, let's, we just click on the multifunction knob and now it says it's going to call him. Once again, scroll down here and it'll say start QSO with KJ5 EJV. So it should start uh, trying to reply to him, and it did. There it goes. So, so now we're sending him a plus three. The reason why I'm, I was, I, it took me a while to try to figure all this out. I had no idea how this worked. So now it says QSO saved. So now I'm sending him a RR73. And then he will send me back a 73. I couldn't figure out what all these buttons did. Um, and I'm still not 100% sure on the CQ modifier, but I believe you can put in something. You can't just put in CQ, your call sign. That See, I got a 73. So now that QSO is saved on the uh, micro SD card. You can take that out. You can put it into your computer, and you can extract that ADI file. I think it's uh, called... Uh, I've done changed the name of that one, but this is, this is the last one that I, oh, you can't see that. Um, it's called FT underscore ADI, I believe is the name of the file. And it's on the data drive, I believe. Yeah. The data drive and the instructions are on the, um, GitHub page. So you can go there and it tells you how to get that file off of there. It's not complicated, but then you can upload that ADI file to your QRZ or whatever program you want. You can also, I had somebody, oh, somebody called me. Uh, you can also upload an ADI file to, you can copy an ADI file that you have and you can put it on your SD card and it will show your contacts, people you've already made contact with, um, it will show up on here. Now, I don't really like that because especially if I'm out portable, I'm gonna start off with a fresh brand new ADI file. So when you get done, let's say you do a park activation, you've made 30 contacts, you get back, you get the ADI file off of the SD card. I go in there and delete the, um, ADI file off of the card. That way, when I start over the next time, it starts over with a fresh um, file. Uh, so we've tried a couple of times to connect to that guy. Um, just FYI, if you want to see what I'm doing here, I'm, I'm running the 6100. I'm running that into my micro PA50. It's putting out about 22 to 25 watts. So I'm here in the house. I'm on an in-fed half wave. Hopefully y'all can see that okay. I think so. Yeah. So, but it, it actually works fairly well. If you don't mind extracting the ADI file, um, it actually works fairly well. So I'll, I'll demonstrate this again as soon as it finishes this transmission. All right, so I'm going to uh, press this. This is going to disable. 
the what they call TX call. Okay, that's when you're communicating with somebody else. Now, this is the part I had trouble trying to figure out was how do I get it back to call CQ? So to get it back to where it'll call CQ, you have to press and hold that. Now it says TXCQ disabled. Now if I click on that, we'll start calling CQ again. There's a, a POTA station right there. Uh, but overall, um, it's I usually have a computer and I like doing it with a computer myself, uh, especially with grid tracker and all that. But for somebody that wants to minimize and just take the radio out, it's a good option. And so far, it seems to be working pretty good. Uh, I'll have to figure out this uh, modifier and exactly how that works. But overall, uh, pretty impressed. And this new, uh, new software is working good. It's keeping up with the time uh, on its own. As long as you got it hooked to Wi-Fi, that is. And I do have a GPS that I can plug into it if, if I really needed to in the field. Uh, what else can I say about it? Uh, <laughs> uh, need to get out and do some portable work. That's what I need to do. Uh, all right. Well, hey, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to sit here and bore you to death, but um, I use one of these little adapters. I pop the SD card out, make sure you got it turned off, and put it in, plug it into your computer, extract the file off, upload it. And uh, so far, so good. Catch you later. All right, I decided to add this little clip. I went ahead and took the SD card out, put it in my uh, computer, and I'm going to, uh, I apologize, my tripod won't reach over here where I'm at where you can see good, so I'm going to open up my file explorer, go to this PC, and naturally, it's not uh, recognizing the uh, drive, so I didn't, something didn't, there it goes. It just wasn't plugged in all the way. So now we have the data. F, FT underscore log. So what I do is just copy. I'm not used to this new context menu. And I just put it over here on the desktop. paste so and then after that I just come up here uh, on this one and just delete it so next time uh, when you put the SD card back in there it's already on there. And don't forget to eject your storage. All right, let's go over here and open up our file. And there is the contact that we made with KJ5EJV. Has a grid square, everything. So from here, I'm just going to close that file out and I'm going to open up my QRZ, go up here to settings and scroll down to where it says import, ADIF import export, click on import, choose the file, um, there it is on my desktop, click on it. Select open and go ahead and click on import. Continue. And we got our one contact there imported. Go back to the list. KJ5 EJV, there it is. Uh, so anyway, that's the process. Not not hard. Um, if you don't mind doing a little bit of work,
may keep you from having to take a computer out in the field. All right, everybody, catch you on the next one.